to the Grog Nerds Corner, and we're moving into turn six of our playthrough of Sixth Fleet, uh, the fifth scenario, we age and offensive, and, and I'm kind of running the numbers right now, and I'm looking what the U.S. forces have left, and pretty much their entire surface force, which they score victory points off, is the Nimitz Task Group and the Biddle right here, which I actually am going to go ahead and just decommission and remove her. She's damaged, she's in port, I'm sure she's got a lot of wounded on her, and there's no sense sending out a wounded cruiser all by her little lonesome to try to hook up with the uh, Nimitz. Just not gonna happen with a reduced movement. And so I'm looking at it, and if I do not lose a single ship out of the Nimitz and get them into the uh, either into Limnos or the six hexes around it, I get a marginal victory. I lose one of those ships and it's a Soviet marginal victory and you know with the ship being lost there's no way I can recoup that recoup that uh, recoup that back and get that loss uh, and change that loss around so basically we're looking at uh, if I just lose one ship out of the uh, out of the Nimitz task group then it's then it's game over for the US so but we're gonna go ahead and we're going to see what we can do because I have a feeling this may be the last turn <laughs> So, it's a night turn. Uh, so yeah, well, the U.S. is putting their standard cap back up again. No big surprise. Those two gloves are probably going to be coming for any second now. First activation, five Soviets. Now, well, we know what they're going to do. Air. <laughs> Okay, so this is going to be a little bit interesting because they they do have cap. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit just to kind of show what's going to happen when the bombers fly out of Tupolev or out of uh, Sevastopol. Um, they're going to come 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15... 16. Now that is the range that they need to fire off their SSNs. One, two, three, four. Their SSNs have got a range of four, so they're going to fire off four. Now, since I've got cap up, I can actually try to intercept. And, and the cap range is four hexes. So now I can try to intercept at any, any point along the path as the aircraft are coming in. The Tupolevs only need to be at range 4 to fire off their missiles, so they're not going to get any closer. So I might as well go ahead and declare my cap intercept now. So let's go ahead and pull these guys off and bring them down to the table so we can do the air-to-air -air combat. Oops, wrong way to zoom in. Okay. So that's what we've got. Now. Like most air-to-air uh, -air combat, you add up all the anti-air values and add them all together and come up with one big fraction. However, there's a little bit something special about aircraft carrier capture. And we're going to go ahead and look at the chart. Our aircraft carrier cap chart. Convenient it's called that, isn't it? So basically, you count out how many hexes away from the target that you're intercepting. So since the Tupolevs only need to be four hexes away to fire off the missiles, I'm going to have to inter intercept them in hex four. Now, the attack value of the air-to-air -air is modified by, by if there's an uh, advanced early warning unit or no advanced early warning unit in the cap mission. For our purposes, we do have an advanced early warning, the E2 squadron. So my combat value is reduced by or reduced a quarter. So that's going to be kind of important. Because our air to air value is 7 and 9, which is a 16. Divided by 4 is 4. 
We'll take a look at the air to air value of the Tupolovs and their early warning. They are as well a four. So we're four to four. We're looking at one to one odds on the intercept table. And the intercept table is over here. So this is going to kind of make it or break it. Rolling on the intercept one to one column. We rolled a five, which is a one R. Okay, so. Soviets take one step loss, and we're just going to make that on one of the Tupolovs, and it returns to base. So since this returned to base, it's not going to get a chance to fire off its missiles. Go ahead and stick that guy back up in Sevastopol. So that's basically the cap phase. And those guys will return to the cap box their job done although since they are on cap with a surface to surface or a uh, SSN strike which this is uh, there they 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 do get a chance to do some damage to the incoming or they get to add in some area or local anti-aircraft fire to help shoot down the incoming missiles Okay, if cap marker is stacked in the same hex as a surface unit is being attacked by enemy surface to surface missiles, SSM combat, the air units on the cap mission may contribute to the defense of the surface unit, C 10.4. Okay, uh, the cap mission can participate in air to air combat at some point earlier in the activation phase. So we did participate in air to air combat, so we can continue to, uh, uh, or we can add in our defense, and that's 10.4. Look at that rule. Let's see. If there's cap mission in the target hex, add two to the total if the cap mission contains one or more F-14s. Otherwise, add one for any cap mission that does not contain an air, air unit, A unit. Okay. So, have we got F-14s. We do have F-14 Tomcats in there, so the grand total of the cap def or the uh, the uh, defense is going to be at a plus two, and then another plus two for the uh, the uh, uh, the task group. So let's go ahead and line these guys up instead of trying to shift the camera over there. So we got 50 value. Got to remember the EW takes minus one away from the uh, from the area anti-aircraft, so we got 50 airstrike coming in. Uh, you know what? We're gonna put 50 on the Degiers and 50 on the Mahan, and if we even get one of them, it's gonna be game over for the U.S. Kind of cheesy just picking on those guys, but eh, is what it is. All right, so we count up our area. Uh, anti-aircraft fire minus one so four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen and then the close anti-aircraft of the ships being attacked 17 18 19 plus the close area of any ships stacked under and you always go from top to bottom so and since both of those are being attacked they can't add their close value in again and then that is a further plus two from the F-14 cap, and I actually just totally forgot what the value was, so let's go ahead and count this up again. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22. All right, so we got air defense of 22, and this is going to be at a plus 2 on the dice roll because they are part of a task group. So we've got a 4 plus 2 is a 6 on the 22, which is a 5 modifier. So the first one, we got 50 points going to the DeGrasse. Three minus five is a negative two on the 50 column. That's a three, that's enough to sink her. She'll flat out get sunk. And on the Mahan, four is gonna be a minus one. On the 50 column is gonna be a three as well, which is gonna sink her as well. That basically is going to end the game because the U.S. now has no possibility of being able to, to, to get enough ships in there 
to get enough victory points to uh, to bring it up over the top. Um, so there, yeah, <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and call it here. Um, I there 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 are some things. Uh, some things that I did wrong early in the game that I probably could have used to uh, to, to modify, or uh, and not modify, but that could have had a longer term effect. My, my mucking up of the uh, the anti submarine warfare value or how anti submarine warfare worked in turns one and two kind of hurt. Plus, I also noticed I was doing the movement on the subs wrong. I was using their defense value as uh, as movement instead of instead of their actual movement. So I'm sure that could have had an effect as well. Um, really, with this one, the simple fact you got all those Tupolovs flying out of Sevastopol, and the U.S. has got to do everything can, they can to keep their keep their uh, surface forces uh, from not being detected. Because once those Tupolovs get flying, I mean, we we saw basically in three rounds of combat, they decimated the Jersey Battle Group. And you know, hurt the Nimitz battle group and ended up sinking what uh, five ships. So, and the problem is, the U.S. has no way really of countering that except for you know the the combat air patrol off of their uh, off of their F-15s. Now, what I could have done, and thinking back on it, was I should have tried to get the Jersey down this way and I had an F-16 squadron in Sigonella. If they'd have been on cap, they'd have been able to provide a little bit of cover. Um, I think, yeah, I think that was the mistake I made is it was pushing the jersey up this way. Should have brought them down this way and kept the F-16 on on, on uh, cap rather than air superiority. That would have given her a little bit of cover. Uh, maybe enough to, you know, maybe drive off one of the squadrons and only deal with 100 attack factors rather than, you know, 150 attack factors. Um, other than that, it's just a tough one for the U.S. The U.S. is, like I said, the U.S. has just got to keep their stuff from being detected. And, uh, yeah, I think at this point the U.S. is going to retire its battle group and uh, wait for reinforcements. And unfortunately, I think the uh, Soviets are going to uh, use that time to dig into Lemnos. And uh, it would be very, from the casualties uh, incurred, you know, with the loss of the Jersey and, and you know, vast majority of the, ba the Jersey battle group, you know, I think NATO would be hard pressed to want to commit any more resources to, uh, to trying to. Uh, uh, keep the Soviets off Lemnos. Interesting situation, fun game. I hope everybody enjoyed. Uh, it actually ended a little bit quicker than I than I had expected, uh, but I had a blast playing this. It, it was really really good to get Sixth Fleet out on the table again. I may have to do this do this again with another scenario. Um, that's all I got for now. Uh, I, I, although I, I, I guess that means now I need to figure out what the next... Oh, that's right. I think I'm doing, going to be doing uh, Great Battles of the American Revolution, uh, Germantown, uh, do that via Vassal. So I think that's my next project. And maybe one or two games on the computer I'm still looking at doing. We'll see. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints? Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms in the comments section. I will talk to everybody later. See ya!